for financial supporters. I'm Sandy Rose. Hi, I'm Pastor William James, and we're the owners of WVTC Gospel Radio Network. And I'm Ramon Perry, president of WVTC. WVTC Gospel Radio Network is again a candidate for the Stellar Gospel Music Awards for Internet Radio Station of the Year, and we need your vote. Go to www.thestellarawards.com and click on the Radio Station Awards ballot. Once you're on the ballot, look for the category Internet Radio Station of the Year and cast your vote for WBTC Gospel Radio Network. Voting is limited to two per household. We thank you for voting for WBTC Gospel Radio Network and we ask that God's choices blessings be upon you and your household. Remember, we're WBTC Gospel Radio Network where we're We're winning winning victory victory through Christ. Well, praise God. Amen. 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 Thank you for that intro. Thank you, Tanisha, from Cupcakes and Conversation. We thank you. Shout out to Tanisha. Yes, yes. Wonderful job. Wonderful Wonderful job. job. Great God. We thank you all for the new commercial that we have, you all. We hope that you all enjoyed it. We ask that you all, uh, first of all, thanks and thank again for you all that are out there. Come on in. There's my big brother, Renard Stevens. Hey, brother. We are thanking God for yet another Monday to come before you guys to bring you all an awesome and amazing show today, you all. We're super excited about what God is going to do as he continues to enhance the kingdom of God, right? And we want to thank you for our uh, our guest today, Pastor Joshua uh, Robinson. We want to thank you for him. How you doing? Can you hear us out there, Pastor? Hey, Pastor. Can you hear us? Okay, I can hear you. Oh, well, praise God. <laughs> We're having some technical difficulties going on there, man. Great. Good, good, good. We can hear you now. Clap it up. Clap it up. <laughs> oh, that's right. I know that's right. <laughs> you done brought us a mighty way over the highways and the over the byways. <laughs> But uh, before you bring you bring you in, past we just want to make sure that we can hear you, man, man of God. And uh, before we start any show, we normally start it off with our scripture, which is uh, Matthew. I'm sorry, Luke uh, 14, verse 23, and it reads as such. Our engineer will get it up there in a second, and it states as, "And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and the hedgeways, and compel them to come into the house, that it may be filled." We're very thankful and grateful that if the, all that is is somebody test to be tell somebody about the testimony. I tell people all the time, you ain't got to get deep. You know, all you got to do is tell somebody how good God has been to you and let the Holy Spirit have his way. And before you know it, you didn't <laughs> you didn't save the soul, because at the end of the day, 
everybody always thinks their situation is bad until they listen to somebody else's situation. Amen. Amen. And it changes things, you know. So I tell people all the time, man, hey, just tell somebody about your testimony, man. And, and, and trust and believe me that somebody's going to be saved. Something's going to be said or something's going to be done. That's going to change the outlook of the whole conversation. Which Amen. Is, which is the good news. Absolutely. So that's what we're doing. We bring light to darkness. Amen. And uh, Pastor, we want to just let you know, service announcement, service announcement. We are not here to help you because help is temporary. We are here to hope you because hope is eternal. So all the information that you give us today that we're looking for, we're praying that it's hope. For the glory, for the kingdom of God. So we are praying that everybody's here that's out there can uh, hear this good good word that you're going to give us on today and all this information. Because yeah. we understand you got a plethora of yeah. information yeah, yeah, for us. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So Amen. I talked to him. Uh, I talked to him. I believe it was last week. Me and him, we talked on the phone and we chopped it up really good. I told him, I said, I'm usually a good uh, judge and character when I'm talking to somebody with good spirit, you know. Man. And uh man, we hit it off really well. And I, I I really love what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. I I consider it an honor and privilege just to be on here with you all this evening. And I and I had the same <laughs> um I got off the phone, I was like, Oh, that's my guy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so like we know each other for a minute, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. But God is good, but that's how God does, though. He, you know what I'm saying? I tell people about me, me and Jill say it all the time here at WVTC Gospel Radio. We tell people don't despise small beginnings, right? Because we don't know where this work can end up, we don't know where the word of God will land. Also, we're on in a hundred countries, right? So we don't know, man. You you know, somebody might call you from uh mm -hmm. Brazil or somewhere. <laughs> you know, Bring your you're, telegram you're, over the hill. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, right, I mean, we, yeah, God is expanding our territory, you yes, know. So uh yes, man, I just hope and pray that we got some pastors that's out there that'll be coming on and we asking that you all drop in your comments. Let us know if you got any questions for my friend, my brother. Uh, Pastor Robson, I want to thank you for being on with us, man. Uh, I'm going to toss it over to Jill. Allie, you put over to Jill. <laughs> Jill, man, <laughs> she's the uh, uh, interviewer, as I will. And uh, we're going to get you in here, brother. We're going to take off like a rocket. Is that all right? That sounds good to me. Amen. But before I get into the content of our, um, our, our topic tonight, which is investing in your future, we're going to have a very interesting conversation. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just, um, I, in all of my emails, I've been signing that the Lord is going to meet us here tonight. And I do believe that the Lord is already in the room. Mm -hmm. But before we do that, we have to pay some bills. Yep. Okay. Yep. So we want to just let our viewers, our listeners know that um, WBC. Mm -hmm. There you go. Good one. you got to pray for us. Right. But we are a two time Stella Award Gospel Internet Radio Station. And we are now currently. We're up for the three peat, and so yes. we are asking our listeners and our viewers to vote, 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 yes. and vote. Um, if you will, uh, we'll drop some links for you to connect with, and um, you and your family members. We ask that yes. you will share that link with those that are in your family and friend network on your social pages. So we just want to bring that three peat home. We want to brag in the kingdom, amen, that God is doing something out of um, little bitty old town outside of Chicago. <laughs> And um, over in Detroit as well, we want to brag the goodness of the Lord. Yes. You know, we don't despise small beginnings because we believe God for um, greater. Yes. We believe that God is using us in a mighty way to enhance the kingdom, to bring great content. I don't know if you guys have been privileged to watch on Saturday mornings. We mm -hmm. have a good Bible study. Mm -hmm. On Monday mornings, we have a great conversation that's been talking about relationships. Mm -hmm. With cupcakes and conversation, yeah, mental um, health, uh, uh, mental health, and yeah. and and then we have um, great um, quartet music, and mm -hmm. then um, we have uh, so, uh, we good, got good inspirational I mean, with um, cousin Latrice. Latrice. Smile. Yeah, on Tuesdays, it's your time um, to she's shine. always it's my time to shine, but she's always highlighting mm -hmm. um, up and coming artists and 
ministers yeah. and people that are uh, you know coming up in their their mm -hmm. ministries and in their entrepreneurial pursuits so um and we have a mortgage doctor and we have yeah. health and fitness we even have a D live dj we got a ton of things i know mm -hmm. i'm missing out on a couple <laughs> so we got a prophetess yeah we do uh, we got some other other mm -hmm. i mean the content is off the chain i yes. mean you don't even have to turn your tv on just literally stay here mm -hmm. um through our network and you can keep yourself busy with mm -hmm. the quality content and stimulate your mind yes um you know help you in, in terms of uh pleather resources so mm -hmm. you know um you know we were just talking to the station owner about some things that are uh, pending we're not able to talk about it but i'm mm -hmm. just excited in the kingdom mm -hmm. how quickly the lord has shifted this experience um we you know we're stable we've been here for seven years and um this year of completion of the beginning stages as you're a new kid and you're going through growing pains now we're in this place where we are seeing who you know our eyes and our ears well we we almost can't even imagine all this stuff that's happening we're we're going in places and into homes through um uh networks and and i mean when, when i said we're doing a thing um i wish i could like really talk about it but i let the station owner uh, get wait, I'll wait, let them give us permission before we speak on it. But um, as Elder Miller suggested, uh, we're all over the the, the world yeah. um, in, in mm -hmm. certain networks. And, you know, with YouTube, anybody can find us, but we'll soon be a click, click away, not just Alexa and Zuri, but we'll be more than a click, click away off on your um, TV sets. Uh, on your TV and in your cable networks. And so God is just moving in a great way with the station. He's given us favor. He's, um, you know, just literally dropping new relationships and networks in our hands. And I just thank God for being a part of this. Amen. I, I feel like a movie star. I don't have my sunglasses <laughs> on today. I feel like a movie star because um, it's quality. Um, you know, this this network is nothing to play with. God has really blessed us to be able to be a part of this network. And so we thank God for that on this evening. So, again, we have up until the 17th. Is on what, a, a Tomorrow, right? No, one more day. Couple days, and um, mm -hmm. we have the opportunity to vote, vote, vote. And if you can, share it with a friend. Yeah, I know they said two votes per household, but I have five people in my household. Let them all my vote. Dog, if them, if them kids got vote. cell phones, yeah. vote from their vote, cell phone. Vote, vote, vote. <laughs> <laughs> we want everybody to vote. Because right. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to bring it yeah. back home. I mean, you know, we are history. We're in the history books. We're in the Library of Congress. So. Yeah. I mean, come on now. We got to do it, and we're going to do it well, but we're going to do it unto the Lord. So Amen. With that being said, let's get into our conversation yes, I'm for excited. tonight. Yeah. Investing in our future. We often talk about raise up a child in the way that they should go. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if they depart and they go off on their way, they're going to come back. We had an example yep. of that last week with yep. one of our our, um, he's no longer a teen. He's a oh, grown man. Grown man. He, you clearly can tell he's rooted and grounded in the Lord. Yeah. But he, you know, his testimony was that pops right here. You know, he um, he put it in me, and um, this is what I haven't done, and this is where I'm going. And so, we strongly believe here at the station. But you know, with the good news of Elder, uh, Elder Miller and I, we are both youth pastor and youth mm -hmm. director mm -hmm. over seven years, and yeah. um, you know, we understand what what it means to invest into our young people, not just on Sunday morning and on Wednesday, oh, yeah. but to invest <clears throat> into them on a regular basis. And tonight we have none other, <laughs> none other, yeah. all the way from, is it Harrisburg? Harrisburg, Harrisburg Pennsylvania. Huh? Pennsylvania, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Ooh, mighty long ways. It just feels cool saying that. Just right. feel, just, I don't know. I want to come visit you, but right. you might have to be in the summertime. <laughs> you, know, you are doing great things yes. all the way out on the East Coast. And my God, just reading up on this program, mm -hmm. I, I just got excited because <laughs> I was literally um, just commenting on someone else's show. Like, I wish they would bring back after school programs because it literally mm -hmm. saved my yeah. life. Yeah. You know, I, I could have been a game banger. I'm, I'm being honest. I was yeah. a little bad girl. Yeah. And um, oh, God. but if it wasn't for after school programs that Gosh. kept me. Yeah. I, I'm telling you, my story mm -hmm. would have been different. Yeah. So we have Pastor Robertson. Give it up, give it up, give it up. Come on, y'all. We thank God for you, Pastor. Thank you. Just thank tell you. us a little bit about who you are <laughs> and what you're doing and how God has uh, given you. Drop this vision down into your spirit and how you've already been working in the vineyard. Please share with us what um, 
what you bring to the table tonight amen sure um and again i can't i can't um over express how grateful i am for the opportunity to speak to you all to be on you all's platform yes. um i just I, you know i truly appreciate god and appreciate um the what community can do right um and, and so being connected to different people who are doing wonderful things across the world it's an honor and a privilege and so i'm, I'm so grateful that you all would allow me to grace um your podcast um, to share with you all so I'm, I'm grateful to be here um again my name is joshua robertson i am the senior pastor of the rock church in harrisburg pennsylvania and i am the ceo and founder of black pastors united for education um, a little bit about our organization. Uh, it's interesting how we started. Uh, really, the vision of what we do uh, was really birthed in, in the middle of COVID. Um, when our students um, began to, you know, had to go home for their education and, and be virtual learners because of the pandemic, mm -hmm. you know, we started receiving 40 to 50 phone calls a day from parents who, you know, they're like, can our kids come to your learning, you know, to your uh, uh, excuse me to your church or you know is there anything your church can do and I, you know what are we supposed to do it, you know there's nothing we can do but then i had a member of my church uh, who was a single woman who lost um her job single woman with a seven-year-old kid she lost her job and she worked at our after school program helping kids with you know homework and stuff like that so i was like oh why don't why don't i hire her as a church um to oversee the academic day of about five or six kids that's all we had capacity for and so we did that in our first year and i didn't think nothing of it i was just like well, well she can right. help you know at the scale that we're at we have a few kids and i had somebody to call us and ask us that we have space to do an after school program and i was like absolutely you know and i'm like what's up so i told them what we did in the middle of COVID and told them about the parents that were calling us and everything and the guy said to me he said well that's a micro school and i was like well what is a micro school <laughs> uh, and so he said he explained what a micro school is he introduced me to some very generous people out of uh, washington dc and we built the rock city learning center um, which is simply this home school at the church oh. uh, that's essentially that's the central concept the kids are enrolled in a public cyber charter school um but they do their academic day at the church mm -hmm. right and so um, monday through friday 8 a.m p.m you know we hire members of our church to customize an experience for each kid and curate an environment that we believe kids can thrive in um, as far as receiving their education the curriculum and the education um and excuse me the curriculum and the instruction come from the public cyber charter school right so we're not hiring teachers we're not a school uh we're not a tutoring agency um really we function as a ministry the kids come voluntarily um and the results have just been amazing in our first year um, we started with nine kids at the end of the year we had 30 kids mm. nine out of those 30 kids were failing when they came to us and 22 out of the 30 finished on the honor roll wow. um, so that was first year second year 51 percent of our kids finished above a 90 percent gpa um, and so we knew we were on to something when we started getting these type of results and and as you all know um as, as people who uh i like to say are from the chocolate side of town <laughs> that's I good way you, right 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 right, <laughs> right. they consider uh, that stolen <laughs> look, look, I tell you, look our kids are not slow our kids are not dumb mm -hmm. most of our kids just need a customized experience of education based off of their skill sets and based off of how they are wired, right? Mm -hmm. And so they just may need a different environment to learn in, right? That's mm -hmm. what I think it boils down to. So we were able to do this in the, over the first two years and then we established Black Pastors United for Education because we wanted to expand this opportunity and help other churches to do what we're doing. And so um, this past year, we applied for the prestigious YAS Award um, and we ended up being a finalist for the YAS Award. We were one of nine other finalists um, and, we, and we were able to win uh, $500,000 for our learning center. Uh, hey, man. Wow. That was a tremendous opportunity. Yeah. 
learning experience and of course privilege to win that but the goal of that grant was to expand um, and was to take what we do and not just sustain what we do but to expand it and that's where we're at now so we are looking to partner um, across the state of Pennsylvania and across this nation with pastors who are interested in educating kids right and so at this point we offer a number of options. And so this is why I'm excited about coming to uh, Chicago, Illinois, where we're going to be partnering with pastors um, in, in order to help them to establish after school programs and summer programs. Um, and, and I can say a little bit about that. I don't want to get too far into this is my passion. So you <laughs> let me know if you, if you want to stop me and ask any questions, uh, we can do that. Uh, if not, I can just keep going and let you know kind of what I plan for for Chicago. No, no, keep going, uh, Pastor. You're doing great. Um, because I, what's, what's going to happen is I think that we'll get fillers. When, you know what I'm saying? When I say fillers, I mean I'll get questions, you yes. know, from people out there and then we can answer. And then guess what? We'll stop you. But right now, I'm loving it. Keep going, Pastor, if you right. Okay. So we have some listeners that are just the viewers oh. that come in. Reverend Franklin is on. Um, we want to welcome you and Sister Jeanette. And uh, myself, uh, Sister Felicia, Felicia, you guys can please, please. Sure. Lady, hey, Lady sure. Miller is on. My lovely you wife. Guys. And hello, Mark <laughs> Elliott. And so we'd like to give a, some acknowledgement to some of our listeners. And this is a great time for you guys. I've been getting um, some inside um, requests for the links for the show tonight. If you guys can share, um, because this is valuable information. Yes. He's getting ready to get into the meat of um, mm -hmm. what the program is really entailing. And um, I'm excited because we don't want to miss this because I know for a fact mm -hmm. that all of the people that I just named are intricately, if I'm saying it correctly, involved in ministry work. And they have favor over their youth programs and after they can create if they don't mm -hmm. already have or expand their after school programs or programs that they have for youth at their churches. Um, and so that's why I want to take a pause just so that they can uh, share. You can tag your pastors please, and tell please. them to log on because, um, you know, we want to hear from the, um, the mouth of the pastor, you know, the, the, the angel of the house. We want to hear it so that they can um, get in contact with him and mm -hmm. meet him because he'll be here this weekend coming up. Mm -hmm. And um, we don't want to miss this opportunity. Chicago is in need of a program like this. So mm -hmm. when I say a need, we, we're always talking about these kids being um, hey, mischievous and, um, uh, um, you know, they, they, they just need to just act right. Yeah, well, give yeah. them something to do. Yes. Put yes. them in the right place in this program. Just like you said. Like, it yeah, will be like a great said. opportunity mm -hmm. for your church to be the safe haven, but also mm -hmm. to be the place where these kids can grow spiritually as well as in the academics. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I'm stopping for a second for those of you. Hey, Sister Lori, hey, hey. Sister Latrice, you guys hey, are Latrice. on. If you have a pastor in mind, please don't hesitate to share, share, mm -hmm. share, to give them an opportunity to get in. And we'll share after the show because it is just that. I mean, when I say I have cousins, I have over 12 pastors that are cousins. Mm -hmm. Especially in Detroit. Now, if you want to go to Detroit, <laughs> oh Lord, oh Lord, I can help you with that. We're coming to Detroit too. We I absolutely, love. absolutely. We're all cousins, and and mm -hmm. and and everybody's a pastor. And I, I'm just like Jesus. Take away. <laughs> when you go in, you don't know whose church to go visit. But okay. <laughs> um, when I go there, my heart is broken because I see so many um, abandoned buildings and yeah, tell just me. broken I dreams. And when you go, it's just like, okay, well, who brings the neighborhood back? Where do the kids go? Mm -hmm. And so, Pastor, this program, you, your vision is needed in a lot of our mm -hmm. disenfranchised communities. And you know what? Let me just say this. Um, how I learned about this brother, uh, how I knew his character and everything was on about him. First thing I asked him, I say, so uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> what about this thing? I forgot how I, I phrased it, but he said, this is no politics involved. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Because you, and, and that's usually where eagles get, you know what I'm saying, yeah. tied into yeah. things. You know, a lot of times pastors won't even take hold to a vision if they didn't think of it. You know, they think, you know, they, they don't want to be a part of it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And, yeah, and I love a real true character as a I, shepherd. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, then the church is beyond the four walls of the church. For you, sure. you know, this program is to put them inside, yeah. but you're reaching out into the community mm -hmm. and you're like, you're like the scripture says, you mm -hmm. know, you want to bid them to come in into yes. the house. Yes. And yes, they are going to get some other um, mm -hmm. benefits off of it, but mm -hmm. we, we definitely, um, 
Pastor, you just already started blowing our mind. So come on. <laughs> oh, you know what? Before we do that, I see my uh, the owner and yeah. one of the CEOs on here. He said, so can the radio station use the program to help people? So that, that's one of the questions for you right there. Maybe you can answer that, Pastor. I think really it's really up to the creativity mm -hmm. and the collaborative spirit of the pastors that I connect with in your area. Right. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, I look and say, all right, if we do. And this is a part of the program in the, we're, we're, that we're bringing to Chicago, Illinois. We're doing two things in Chicago, Illinois. Mm -hmm. Number one, establishing after school programs. Number two, establishing summer work programs for teenagers. Mm -hmm. Right. So the pastor may say. You know what? A part of our after school program. Let, how about it? This I'll give you the example as I'm explaining what the after school program is, and then I'll go to the summer program and I'll use the example of the radio station as a creative way to think about both. Um, so with the after school program, there's two fundamental purposes for our after school program. Shockingly, one is not homework assistance. Mm -hmm. So we don't do any homework assistance. Our primary goal for our after school program is to help students get to grade level in math and in reading, mm -hmm. mm. right? Mm -hmm. What we find is that a lot of our students are smart, brilliant. They can do the work. Mm. But when you press them about the fundamentals of reading and the fundamentals of math, they're either calculator dependent or they need some type of median to help them with interpreting information when mm -hmm. they have to read it for themselves. Right. Yeah. So our number one goal is to help students get to grade level in math and in reading. Our second goal is career exploration. Okay. Right. So let's say, you know, after school program starts at three o'clock, four thirty, they're done with all of their math and their reading, or you know, whatever time that may be. We serve the kids a meal. After that is career exploration. Well, the radio station sounds like a wonderful career for a young man or young woman to be in. Mm -hmm. right? It might be one day a week or twice a week coming to the radio station and learning the intricacies of how to run the radio station. and But not only how to run it as a host or as a person who's producing it, but how to run the business aspect of it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it works so, out on location. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... The second, our second goal again is career exploration. Um, and so that may be uh, a way to partner with the radio station. But let me give you another example as I explain the summer program. Our summer program is meant to help students learn how to be entrepreneurs. We call it BPUE business builders. Mm. <laughs> and what we do is we take space that is available in churches and we prepare them to be after school programs or learning centers, right? So for instance, you have a Sunday school room that you want to use for the after school program. Well, we allow the students, the teenagers, to learn how to lay a floor, learn how to paint the room, um, learn how to do, you know, stuff within the safe for a kid to do under the direct supervision of a licensed contractor. We hire them to do that but we also hire the teenagers. So they make $200 a week for eight weeks in the summer, renovating space in the church. But not only do they renovate space in the church, our kids learn how to run a payroll system. Uh, we, we teach the kids how to run a 501c3, how to apply for a LLC, um, how to be a board member um, and a nonprofit, right? So how to operate within Robert's rules of law, right? <laughs> So we're, we're teaching our teenagers and preparing them to be business builders. Amen. So it might be that a satellite location for the radio station is an empty room in the church. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. and so maybe the summer project for the kids is producing a radio station, Absolutely. a satellite radio station in one of the rooms of the church. Amen. Right. Mm. You hear that, Reverend? <laughs> <laughs> Live. <laughs> exactly. My wife told me, can I be a kid? <laughs> well, you know what? You know, this is, um, this I don't is know vague. if you notice it, but a lot of the yeah. mega churches or bigger churches now are doing a segment at the end of their services. And I know my church in particular mm -hmm. has it at the end where the young people actually do a takeaway, a live setting 
where they're like the cameraman and they talk about what happened in the service and they give a few points of a takeaway. And I, I, I think it's a phenomenal program to engage young the younger demographics in the church. Uh, one, to make sure that they're paying attention. And two, it stimulates the ones that are watching on TV. You know, when they bring the energy, they're they're encouraging the young people in their age bracket to, you know, hey, you know, I see myself at church and they look like they're enjoying themselves. So imagine what would happen in the summertime if our young people could actually have a live studio, you know, coming from maybe a youth uh, explosion. It's fifth Sunday exactly. at the church. Well, let me, let me take it a step further. What if in the 21st century, teenagers are not excited about going to Sunday school? But what if this little thing that they have, y'all know this thing, y'all, y'all know how to do it. <laughs> Right, right. And y'all see a beautiful lady right there too. Shout oh, yeah, right, right, right. Shout out to your wife. Hey, lady, lady. Right? <laughs> hey can we get some clap up? Hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I told you, Cass, we got you back on. Get you some cooters, get some cooters, man. Look, and might I add, my wife is from Chicago. Yeah, hey, <laughs> so, hey, hey, look. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. So, so what if they're not excited about Sunday school, but what if their Sunday school is taking pictures and videos from their phone during the Sunday morning worship service? And then after service, they have to produce memes and videos and reels for the church from the content. And they get to go to their own studio that's in their church that they built. Mm-hmm. Right. And now they're helping the church to have an online presence. Mm-hmm. Right. And now you may not can get them to memorize the lesson from Sunday school, mm-hmm. but they're creating memes and mm-hmm. posts and real the content they yeah. learn in yeah. church. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that, that's awesome. But that's awesome. Awesome. paying attention to the yeah. service yeah. and yeah. Yeah. the content. Exactly. Yeah. Look at right. them. So so what I'm trying to do is get pastors to see that if we could stay true to the message, Mm -hmm. but innovate in our methods, Mm -hmm. uh, we can capture this generation, the generation to come. Um, And for me, I've learned how now to, um, you know, really garner funding that can help pastors to do it. Right. So that's one of the reasons why I'm excited about Chicago is because our organization, Black Pastors United for Education, I've raised we've raised one hundred thousand dollars to invest in churches in Chicago. Right. And so when we come, we're not only coming with encouragement and with ideas, but we're coming to make an investment with these churches in Chicago and these pastors um, so that they understand we're better together. If we put our minds together, we can create after school programs, we create summer programs and we can we can renovate our church spaces as we provide opportunities, as you talk about investing in our futures. I believe that we are the trustees of our children's future. Mm, I've been saying that for how long? And so I think we we must do it in a way that's empowering and in a way that uplifts our community and and the world around us. Amen. Amen. You just you just loaded up my barrel, man. Oh God, you, my barrel is overflow, man. That just, <laughs> see that I'm told you the plethora. You yeah, man, you just yeah. said a, a mouth a mouthful. Yeah. And if there's any pastors that's out there or anyone that's listening, you all and, and also pastor. The second that we get off the air, this is replayed as well. Right. So right. you will be able to share this with whoever you you know what I'm saying, if you will. Absolutely. You to see it. And, and, and that's a good thing because now you have content, mm-hmm. right? Someone can actually see the things that you've talked about today. And also it'll give them a segue into some of the things that you do already. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because we are people of vision, right? Mm-hmm. So somebody sees this, right? This broadcast and they say, oh, wow, who is this pastor from Pennsylvania? You know what I'm saying? We, we need to talk to this brother about doing this mm-hmm. because like I said, man, this thing is, it could be huge. Mm-hmm. Right. And I love that some of the things that you said in uh, from uh, uh, Reverend Franklin, he said, we have the radio station, we got the TV network, we got the producer, we got the music, just to name a few. Right. 
So basically what he's saying is so we got a platform. He said he's, the, he's the bishop of the church. <laughs> right. And we can work it out. <laughs> yeah, you come, I love it. Yeah, yeah when you yeah. come in town, we're going to definitely try to see if we can get a seat at the table. Maybe we yeah. can RSA. Oh, what is it? Oh, so do one of your notes. Uh, I said I'm RSA. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can RSA. But, you know, because you see it, and I know that the listeners are thinking, your minds are, are, are you know, like, oh, my God, I'm getting excited. Hey, Sylvia, I see you. But, you know, this is a good time. I, I would like our engineer to post um, pastor's um, uh, contact information, if you can, one more time, because this is where I want you guys to screenshot, screenshot, screenshot. Yes, because yes. Now, Pastor, I want you to tell people again, when are you coming into town so that people can meet you and, um, mm -hmm. you know, um, get a better listen to this program and this, um, this presentation? I know that you are excited and... You want to walk away with your, um, you know, your offers and people excited. You want to say, I have so many people to pick from. Oh, my God, I was overwhelmed. <laughs> oh, Lord, Chicago just blew my mind. And yeah. so when we say we're going to send them, if they're not. One thing about the, the good news with Elder Miller, as soon as this, this, this uh, podcast <laughs> is off the air, not only are our phones ringing, Mm -hmm. and our inboxes are full the next day and the phone calls just keep going i just got um well, whenever we have people on the show we had a chiropractor here it, well over a month ago i just mm -hmm. had two people today um calling um one for services but two women's programs asking her to come on to do a presentation mm -hmm. so when i say that our, our the people that we we interview um that we work with um and we expose them to the networks they're usually very happy after mm -hmm. being on the good news, because he has a huge network, and the Lord has this 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 way about um, taking care of his business. You have mm -hmm. a request, you cast your care, he mm -hmm. meets the needs, and yeah. so we want to stand with you, and we believe God with you that mm -hmm. when you come to Chicago, that you mm -hmm. will be overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. You will be overwhelmed with favor, and. Right. Um, the request that you'll have to go back home and say, we did not think of this big enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have to, we have to mm -hmm. do something different because I didn't understand the need was so, so large. And, um, and whatever you can do this year, I understand budgets are set for the years, but I, I pray that the Lord will exceed your expectation. Mm -hmm. um, and I, and I'm not just bragging on WV. WVTC. VTC. <laughs> and the good news. See, see, we help each other out. <laughs> the good news with Elder Miller. <laughs> I'm just talking about this network, you know. Um, and you got one that go, bah. You have favor. <laughs> yeah, you definitely have favor here because we believe in the work that you're doing and we stand in support with you and we'll continue to fight along with you. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Thank you. Know. And it's, it, it takes a village, right? Um, yeah. Right? It takes a village to do more than raise the kids. It, it takes a village, I think, period, just yes. to be successful. Um, so I'm excited about that. We're going to be out in Chicagoland uh, this Saturday, April 20th, uh, from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock at the South Holland Community Center, mm -hmm. uh, which is located 501 East 170th Street, South Holland, Illinois, 60473. Um, and so- that flyer that I gave you? That, um, that I, I sent you the flyer. If not, I'll resend it to you. I'll make sure you get it. We do have um, there it is. Yes. Yeah. So if you guys can screenshot that, I know it's a quick one, but if you can screenshot it and share, and share, and share, please share. And share it. Share the show because I know you know of a pastor or two, that youth director or two yes. that could seriously utilize. They have the facilities, they have the capacity, and they probably been sitting at church trying to figure out how to do it. And 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 a lot of times, I know myself from a ministry that um, Gerald and I, Elder Miller and mm -hmm. I worked in, um, you, you, you're quite concerned about what happens to the kids after Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, and you have a Friday night jam session and you know that that's still not enough. Um, and yeah. you, you're, you're lacking in staff. And one of the issues with staff is not that you have to have a ton of money, you just need to have something to support the cause. You have mm -hmm. costs associated with these programs and for smaller churches and even, you know, um, a, a, a church that has, um, you know, a nice amount of members, sometimes just getting the program up and going initially is quite difficult. But to partner with someone is a whole different story. And mm -hmm. so I, I just want you guys to share, share and share 
so that um, you can encourage your pastors and youth directors and leaders to meet Pastor Robinson. Um, yes. You know, you got to in contact with them so that you can. Um, now, do they need to RSVP to be a part of this program? Yes. For Saturday. Yes, please. So uh, one thing about me, I like to eat. Uh, <laughs> uh, we go be feeding y'all. And right. I don't want to run out of food, so we need to know who's gonna be there. Right. Well, praise God for that. Yeah. yeah. So, run them all so 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 <laughs> and when you share and you want to get on the phone and say, Hey, I sent you something, you need to RSVP right away so they mm -hmm. don't close down the reservation. Mm -hmm. And that way we can um, you know, get as many people in front um, you know, of this opportunity as possible. Mm -hmm. And um, you know. We pray that you have a success, and if not, come on back to Chicago. <laughs> I get it. I, I'm trying to make it. I'm trying to give pastors and churches every reason to. So, um, quietest tip: there will be a twenty-five thousand dollar grant recipient um, when we come. So, it <laughs> might behoove you to, be able to get the information mm -hmm. um, because we coming and we coming with resources. We coming to share. We're coming to help. Um, and how about not help? How about hope? Oh, yeah, you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. We're hope you. Yes, Lord. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. we can do it together. There's things that you can learn from us. There's things we can learn from you. Um, and I mean that the the reciprocation of this love and sharing is what I think is just what's needed. So, so I'm excited about this. And let me let me quickly say this. One of the greatest things that I'm excited about with the Learning Center and everything that we've been able to do, mm -hmm. there's a student right now who came to us who, when she came to us, she didn't know the Lord, right? Um, now she's saved. Mm. She's been baptized in our church. And let me tell you, when when her mother came, it was a sense of desperation, right? Just, you know, you, you caught tears of what am I going to do? I know my, my baby needs help, you know. Mm -hmm. how, you know what is this going to do? How 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 are we going to help my child get through this? But when she saw her child coming up through the waters of baptism, those tears turned to tears of joy. Amen. Um, and so, I look at our youth department at our church that started with about four kids. You know, that's all we had really. You know, four maybe six teenagers. Right. And now every Friday, you know, we're we're closer to twenty kids. Um, and guess where these kids are coming from? The learning center. Mm -hmm. um, so it's amazing when you can have contact with these children and with their parents um, and all of that, you know, every day um, through the program like this, where you're really empowering them and helping to solve problems that their parents see. No parent wants to see their child struggling in school, right? No, no child, want, no, no parent wants that. But to help their child success at that local church it makes parents grandparents community people you know so our church it makes them interested in what the church is doing mm -hmm. and, and let me say this fundamentally this is about evangelism and discipleship absolutely and that's what we about discipleship exactly. All, uh, the, um, Latrice just said does the program go to Detroit not uh, yet not, not, yet. not, not yet. yet not yet but I will say this, um, this past week, so I grew up Church of God in Christ. Yeah. <laughs> That's my background, right? I'm, 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 I'm a Kojic preacher. Absolutely. Hey, hey. <laughs> right? So last week I was in Memphis at our headquarters for our April call meeting, connecting with pastors. And today I had someone contact me about, could we do something in Michigan? Right. Um, could we do something in Michigan and can we do something in New York? And um, so the person who asked about Detroit, um, not this time. This is just for Illinois, Chicago, Illinois. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the near future, yes. uh, we're going to be we're going to be pulling up to Detroit. So this year uh, and according to our fiscal year this year, which ends in July, uh, we're, we're going to be Chicago, Illinois and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, yeah. But uh, next year. Um, I'm hoping to double up at Chicago. So maybe next year we bring 200,000 to Chicago 
and then start in uh, Detroit, Michigan as well. So it's on our radar, my sister. Absolutely. Amen. Well, Pastor, I will do my best tonight to make sure I get on the wire with the um, the prelate here <laughs> in Illinois, Northern uh, Illinois District. Absolutely. That's done tonight. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> We got peoples. Those peoples are in the family. <laughs> right, right. My <laughs> That's, people, it. That's my family. Peoples, right? That's my family. And so we make right. sure that you get a direct um, line to them. In the Absolutely. Oh. See, again, we better together, right? Just, yeah. just that right there. What you just said right there is the essence of what we're trying to build as an organization. We're trying to get people, churches to understand, man, if we work together Amen. and we share and we get rid of the unnecessary dynamics of hierarchy, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh, Jesus, you just said something that you got to get the love off. Come on now, clap it up. If we could do that, if we could do that, we could make a significant change um, in our world today. So that's what I'm about. That's That's my heart, passion. Yeah. It's seeing transformation. Um, and uh, I'm telling you, it's nothing like, let, let me say this about our kids and our learning center. It's nothing like their excitement when they have a report card they're proud of. Yeah, that's awesome. Right. Um, yeah. And so. Uh, I mean, but amazing. the caveat of what you just said, there's nothing like a mother whose heart is weighing very heavy about the direction in which your child is going. And you can see the influences from the outside world that there's no connection with, you know, the Lord. Um, and, and you're concerned at age 12, those are past your formative years. So mm -hmm. that behavior pattern is, is set. Mm -hmm. But we know that there's nothing too hard for God. And all you need is the right place at the right time. Yes. Say that. Mm -hmm. In the right space, in the mm -hmm. presence of God. And then you just let God do what he does. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it, But you got to make sure you get them in the right place. Yep. at the right time mm -hmm. to allow the Holy Spirit to do what he said, you know, he wants to do with his children. And, um, you know, as a parent, I've been one. I am one. When you go, oh, thank you, God, for helping my child. <laughs> oh, I have been one. Mm -hmm. One conversation in mm -hmm. church drastically changed the life and the trajectory of my mm -hmm. child's um, life. So I know from a mother's perspective, you you know you pray day in and day out. You're yes. you know just hoping that something will happen to change things. And when it does, you change that child for life, Absolutely. and you change the mother. You know it's like I owe a debt to God that um, I don't think I'll ever pay. You know, yeah, I can't be everywhere with my child, but that one opportunity, that one experience, did something that I could not do. It looked like in a lifetime. Amen. Deborah said, I've been trying to get you some churches, Reverend Josh. Deborah Rush, uh, that that uh who is that? Mother is that would that be mother in law or um that is my that's my wife's aunt. Okay. okay. <laughs> which which is my aunt. That's okay. my aunt Deborah, right? That that which is my aunt. <laughs> <laughs> Right. And she know, and she know I love her big, big time, right? She oh, up, 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 oh, come on, on come on. Come on. Yeah. When, 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 they, when the women are serious, the women yeah. work with purpose. When they serious, yeah. they will get on that phone. Yeah, they will. And they will make a make difference. It, make we'll it show up, won't we? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, he said, she said, love you too. Wow. <laughs> that's right. That's so nice. I know that's right. Praise God. So man. listen, listen, I got one question for you because we had a, a, a plethora of questions over here. We didn't get to them because <laughs> right. you pretty much answer most of them. Um, you gave us why it's important to give back to the communities and your encouraging words you've already given them. But, um, you know, bringing this STEM, I call it STEM, um, uh, to our communities, what really um, I, I know you said it was in COVID, but what really made you, when you decided to do this, I know you probably encountered some obstacles along the way as an entrepreneur because you're a pastor and pastor is always about a business. Um, so at the same time as being a pastor, you still have um, this vision. And as you try to develop it, um, I'm sure there were challenges that came along the way, especially when you're trying to secure funding 
you have this great vision. I want to do it. Lord, how are you going to provide? Um, what 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 in that season, in that time frame, um, was your outside of prayer? Because we know that's what you, you've been a praying man. Um, no doubt about that. Well, what what did you do? I mean, you know, what settled your spirit in that process? Because I can only imagine the success that you've already uh, been able to accomplish. It had to come with challenges. How do you get through? Sure. Um, uh oh, <laughs> it's a good one. It's a good one. Important with me, uh, and and why this is so important to me. Mm -hmm. uh, you're looking at and talking to a man who didn't know how to read until he was 19. Wow. So I I was able to matriculate. Through 12 years of school and graduate and i was probably reading on a first or second grade level uh, and it was because of my athletic prowess at the time now this was a hundred pounds ago so y'all got to give me grace when i when i was a <laughs> oh, <Jesus. laughs> this was a few moons ago but i was a basketballer i was a footballer i was a baller and and as a kid and I was able to slip through the cracks and get all the way to um, Gardner Webb University. I missed out on a significant amount of Division One A offers in high school because I didn't have the SAT um, in order to play at the Division One A level. And so I eventually passed the SAT and got got the grade and got the score. And after three semesters at Gardner Webb University, I had a 0.67 GPA. Mm -hmm. um, and when I failed out, um, I re I'll, I'll never forget, I was at home in Pennsylvania on my way to Altoona, Pennsylvania with a friend who I grew up with, um, with bad intentions, right? I just leave it at that. I'll tell you off camera. With, 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 <laughs> right, right. Uh, but it, it wasn't good. I was about to make a life changing, you know, stupid decision. Um, and a bishop in North Carolina called me and he called me and he said, hey, man, when you coming back down south? I said, man, I ain't coming back. I, you know, I failed out of school, football's done. And he said, man, whatever you're doing right now, you're about to ruin your life, aren't you? Jesus. Right. And he said that like four times. And after the fourth time, I had tears coming down my face because I knew what I was about to get myself involved in. Mm. And the bishop pleaded with me to move back down to North Carolina, live with him, right? And the first day I got down, there, he enrolled himself and myself in the Cleveland Area Community College in Shelby, North Carolina. And this bishop went to school with me and taught me how to be a student, taught me how to read. Wow. 19. Watch this. He's an earned PhD. He paid for it on his own dime. Right. And that turned my life, that changed my life. Right. But now I have a bachelor's degree from the University of Minnesota. So I was able to go back to college. I was able to play football in college, right? And now I have a master's degree from Evangelical Theological Seminary, right? And I'm preparing to get my PhD. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen without this bishop inconveniencing himself. Yeah. To help a brother. I had only known him a month. Wow. And the reason why I had met him was because I played the organ at his church. Wow. Wow. All right. You never know what God got in store. Exactly. He it's caught you store. just in time. Caught me just in time. He caught you just in time. Right. The organ being a church kid, right? Just being a church kid. I ain't have lessons and all that type of stuff. I had a few people show me stuff here and there. I didn't have lessons. No, no, no. Just being in church, right? And I'm just talking about what the church can do. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. This bishop did it for me. The church helped me learn how to play music and all of that. But imagine if churches work together strategically to do what that bishop did for me at 19. Mm -hmm. What would do it for kids at nine? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. you intervene like that at nine. Yeah. And so when you ask me about mm -hmm. this, I have to give you my why. My yeah. skin in the game is I represent those kids we trying to Reach. Look at God. Look at God. Look at I should have been a statistic. Yeah. Wow. 
No, don't don't give me no E flat right now, brother. Because I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I know what the Lord has done. Right, right, right. I know what the Lord can do. Look, look I'm trying to tell you. That's why I come to church with yeah. the butt God. Somebody put butt God in the comments. I come okay. to church with the butt God praise. Yes, come on, but God. But God. God. God, Jesus, but God. absolutely, understand me, mm, yeah. uh, uh. and that's why for me, I, I my passion for this is deep, and I want to work with pastors and churches who have a passion to help people, but God, but right? God. But God. help these children, and the church should be at the center. Yes, yes. Of these issues, right? Yeah. We we think about it. There is a church in every community that we're talking about that Come needs. On, man. I just yeah, past I just talked. I've been saying this. I don't know how long. Mm -hmm. it, there is a church in Chicago on oh, every, every corner. corner. If they just came outside their four walls and do one thing, the number one thing that God commissioned us to do love. was love thy neighbor. Oh. Just think about it. If we can come out. And, and just, just walk down somebody. your street just and you love on somebody and just love pray for them and not judge them for how they look. Yeah. You know, and, and just, just believe that the blood of Jesus yeah. going to cover you. Because at the end of the day, if it's your time, it's your time. Yeah. For God I live, for God I die. At the end of the day. But so what you I can't be a of the day. What I heard in past the day. story was humility mm -hmm. and a, like your favorite word, agape yeah. love. Agape. And, you know, this pastor did something that he did not have to, to do. do that changed your the life. trajectory of yeah. your life. And so now you're forever different. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, was it Pastor Hannah says, I'm just different. Right. I'm yeah. different. I'm not the pastor chasing mm -hmm. a platform with a TV. I'm right. I'm chasing the souls that are lost. I'm, ch I'm chasing after the mm -hmm. ones who, who who have been forgotten? That's what I'm worried about. Y'all worried about evangelism on a big TV, and nah. he said, "I'm not pimping a pulpit. I'm just not. I, I'm going to go after the laws." Absolutely. Oh, and we thank God for you and your authentic yeah. testimony. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's needed yeah. in this day and time. Everybody's all about greed and position mm -hmm. and power, and, and titles. You're still saying, "Do we remember <laughs> the children?" Titles. Yeah, let's remember the children I, because I, they are our future. If we don't invest in them, I, I now, hear it all the time where we're condemning and talking about what we see on the TVs with the violence and all of the carjackings. But, what but my thing is, what, what are you doing are as you a doing? solution? Thank you. What are we Thank doing? You. I Thank just you. literally was part of a um, a panel, and I was asked, um, "What what what can we do?" I'm like, "Bring the gems back, you know, creative arts, okay. bring it back." You know, we've um, a, a allocated money in so many different places. Why aren't we bringing it? Give them something to do other than an iPad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you know, I, and if we're going to do an iPad, like you said, create opportunities in the church so that the kids can work, they can develop, they can learn, they can grow. But we got to do better than just giving them an iPad and isolating them in the corner. Well, the number one thing for me is, is just like, OK, we got the big pandemic going on with, with in Illinois and you got Brandon Johnson trying to get seven seventy million dollars for immigrants. Right, to come over here and live with you know, and you have this problem. The, the number one rate from 11 to probably I would say 25, that's where 90% of your crime comes from. Why come we can't use you know, why come you can't have a lot money to get pro bring programs back? You know what I'm saying? Because, like you said, after school programs, gym. Drum, you know, a uh, drawing, draft. I want money for yeah. the immigrants. I just want yeah. maybe, oh, some, I don't, I don't, maybe some yeah. less salaries up there. A lot of people got salaries. Yeah, they but, don't need them. Yeah. You know what I said? They got salaries they probably don't yeah, need. Yeah, say it ain't so. So that we can have more <laughs> allocated to these, um, you know, these partnerships between the city and these smaller non for profit mm -hmm. organizations called churches and things like that. You know what I'm saying? Allocate more money to the faith based. I, I yeah. say it like this we can fight for our kids. Or we shouldn't be mad yeah. if they fight us when they get of age. No. Oh, that's no. what's happening now. You I mean, you know, the, think about the saints that's it. going upside. Man, they going up no respect for nothing. So we have to you create know. pastors. Yeah. If you are on the line, please, 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 please give Pastor Robinson. Um, call his his um information that we had. We have it posted. If we could do it one more time, if we yeah. can just do a banner, contact information, and they can email you. 
um, contact you so they can get to this event and have be a part of this conversation. Yes. And if nothing, if they're not able to do it this year, um, we pray that you'll have um, an opportunity to have a database to be able to connect and um, absolutely, absolutely. Not not only do I want to be a blessing to the pastors in Chicago, Illinois. But my long term goal is to help pastors to learn how to fundraise, like how I've been able to fundraise. Amen. Mm, right? Amen. So, you know, I, I think, imagine again, well, the scripture says that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the yes. righteous. Yes. Right. Um, and so, my, my thing is, if, you could, if I can leverage what I know and you can leverage what you know, I am sharpening iron. Irons. Absolutely. That's what church yeah. together is all about. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm excited for the opportunity, and I encourage any pastor um, that's on the line, please reach out, right? Yeah. Please reach out, um, and we're going to do our very best to partner yeah. and make sure that in your church we can we can establish something um, that will be significant, something that will help grow your church, something that will empower your community, um, and uh, something that will just be a blessing to the world that we are entrusted to steward on behalf of our God. Yes. And before we get out of here, Pastor, this this never none of this would have been made available if it wasn't from my good friend who I've known for over 20 some years, Deacon Jeffrey Rush. Give it up, y'all. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to the deacons. Yeah. Absolutely. Because, you know, it's the job of the deacon. Right, 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 right. Job of the deacons. Right, especially if you coach. You know? <laughs> That's why I got the big head about being a deacon. I'm a deacon in Church of God in Christ. Right. Praise right. Amen, y'all. <laughs> hey, Pastor, we really enjoyed you. We definitely going to keep in touch, brother. And I'll be reaching out to you, too, on the phone, man. We'll be chopping right. a little bit before you get here. Uh, Saturday and see if there's anything that we can do to help out to make this thing a blessing, man. We appreciate you. Appreciate you all. How y'all know? Y'all know. Look, look at my hair, y'all. Like it's uncombable today. <laughs> off the chain, you all. Some J- hair. Right? <laughs> y'all know how I do a piece of hair grease. Much love. Reach one, Thank teach you, one. And that's Thank I've been saying this you. all my life. Reach one, teach, teach one. one. That's what I it's love. all about, Pastor. Love your spirit, man. Love you. Love Thank you. We love all you. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Everyone have a good evening. Hi, I'm Sandy Rose. Hi, I'm Pastor William James, and we're the owners of WVTC Gospel Radio Network. And I'm Ramon Perry, president of WVTC. WVTC Gospel Radio Network is again a candidate for the Stellar Gospel Music Awards for Internet Radio Station of the Year, and we need your vote. Go to www.thestellarawards.com and click on the radio station awards ballot. Once you're on the ballot, look for the category Internet Radio Station of the Year and cast your vote for WBTC Gospel Radio Network. Voting is limited to two per household. We thank you for voting for WBTC Gospel Radio Network and we ask that God's choices blessings be upon you and your household. Remember, we're WBTC Gospel Radio Network, where we're winning victory through Christ.